What's up all you sexy mofos? I wasn't anticipating making another video this quickly, but as I was having my community discussion on my live stream, a sort of a forums so that we could discuss all the data mined information, PUBG dropped five new screenshots for the new desert map. Now, if some of you aren't familiar with what I speak of, then let me get you up to speed about everything that's been announced so far and what we have to look forward to in the future. With some, with some magic, and some voodoo and some witchcraftery. This is what we got from the test servers. Somebody data mined all the files uh, from TSL games and they were actually able to extract the future. Cause this is the future. So I wanna quickly go over some of the stuff, the facts that were data mined right out of the TSL 1.0 PC patch on the test servers. First off, we got a real high-end resolution of the desert map and it looks rich. I mean, full of real estate all over the place, trees, forest areas. We have three bridges to contend with, not to mention a whole lot of new cities where everything looks different. The buildings are different. We've got construction areas, uh, maybe even access to different kinds of elevators or staircases on the sides of these construction buildings but again that is an optimization issue we don't really know if we're gonna have access to these upper level floors of these buildings but I'm gonna talk about the optimization of the game and the future of the optimization a little bit later in the video we also discussed how this map is going to affect gameplay and how it's gonna be a game changer when it comes to final circles because of the fact that there is so much real estate I really really hope that PU uh, puts in bullet penetration at some point because it's just gonna be a camper's game when it comes to this particular map. We drew out many random circles all throughout the map, say for a final circle, and there was always some piece of land that had real estate in final circle. Look, I'm just gonna close my eyes and just draw a circle. You can see that, that no matter where we pick a final circle, there's going to be plenty of real estate for, for people to hide in. I would say 80 to 90% of the time, unless it's a water circle, you're going to run into campers that are hiding in buildings. The slums over here are the same metal shacks and there's, there's trees everywhere. There's trees, there's cacti. You can see the cacti right there. And this is what we're looking at right there. That is kind of what we're looking at right there. And you can't see the trees, but they're there. And that's why I'm talking about bullet penetration. And there's a lot of these little slum-like little houses scattered all over the map. And it would be amazing if we could actually destroy the tin shacks with maybe a 7.62 round or a 5.56. And we could get some bullet penetration in there to kill the people that are camping inside the little slum houses. Maybe it's just me and I've been spoiled with Armor 3. But I would really like to know what you guys think. Uh, whether or not bullet penetration needs to be implemented into the game before the desert map even comes out. Here's my only thing with the desert map. I hope that they give us more than just eight circles because it's such a big map. And that's what I wanted to talk about next is that the map is definitely confirmed to be eight by eight kilometers by player unknown himself. And it's bigger than people think. Okay. So most people think it's four by four mm -hmm. and it's actually eight by eight. It's eight by eight, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I did hear when you first talked about it, I thought someone said it would be smaller. So yeah, no, you... originally we had planned for 4x4, four four, mm -hmm. but then after thinking about it, you know, for 100 players, an 8x8 eight eight just makes more sense, and it gives more flexibility when we move on to custom games and other mm -hmm. stuff like that as well. As always, links to everything that you're seeing today on this video will be down at the bottom, including the Twitter feed, and also you'll have in the description the Reddit AMA post that PlayerUnknown did just a month ago. All right, I feel like I've already spent way too much time on the map itself. We'll probably do another in-depth analysis of the map itself or a map guide if you guys are interested in that leave a like on this video and let me know in the comments below whether or not you want to see that at the end of the year the map will be released along with vaulting and I'm assuming the game will be finally out of early access and we'll get a full complete game also if you haven't seen the vaulting video that I made along with the entire patch the 1.0 PC patch there'll be a little icon that will pop up right now we can click on it and you can look at all the notes that I've described in that video for the entire patch moving on let's quickly talk about the new vehicles that were data mined out of the test server we've got two new vehicles including the one that we already knew about on Twitter the Volkswagen uh, Beetle van the old Volkswagen van uh, which is it's so it's so ugly but it's so cute it's like a pug it's ugly but it's cute um, who knows maybe we'll be able to squeeze in like six or seven people in here 
when you're doing six, seven, eight man squads on custom servers, it's an, I, I think that it's a van. You should be able to fit at least more than four, at least six. Honestly, this is all just speculation at the moment, but the best thing that was data mined is this goddamn off-road. You guys already know we hold the best driver NA title, and I have a feeling that once this off-road is implemented, if it is, we'll hold the title of best flipper NA as well, because this looks like it can flip very, very easily. DP, oh my God, I, I, I'm set. I'm set, put a little DP on the hood. Get your own custom logos or like a little DP on the door like we used to have in Arma. Custom decals. That is a goddamn dream. Oh, sorry. Christian channel. Ah, ah, ah. We've also got what appears to be a basic render of a jet ski. Now, Player Unknown already teased us one time with the jet ski on his Twitter feed. Uh, if you guys didn't see the post, I'll put it up for you right now. And as far as the actual render itself, it's not complete. It does look pretty basic. <laughs> I call this the clog. Now, obviously, that's not what the end product is going to look like. They're going to use some voodoo and magic, as always. And uh, we're going to have some color and better textures for the jet ski and everything. But I feel like this is going to be one of the fastest vehicles in the water. Uh, probably uh, compare it. The best comparison I can come up with is the bike and uh, maybe one more way for you to kill your teammates uh, in the game. All right, I want to talk briefly now about the gun that was also data mined from the test servers, the DP-28. Now, it looks like it's going to come standard with the bipod. It's the Russian counterpart of the M249. It was actually used in World War II, and the magazine that this gun has is pretty awkward. It's like a giant dinner plate on top of the gun. It also throws off the balance of the gun. So I don't know how this gun's gonna fire or how accurate it's gonna be at longer distances, but the fact that it's gonna be chambered in a 7.62 round and will probably end up with about 50, maybe more than 50 rounds, it's definitely going to be a home wrecker, especially if they put in bullet penetration. This thing should be able to destroy any of those slum buildings that we talked about earlier. A lot of people are already speculating that it's going to be a common spawn, but I really hope that's not the case. I hope that this LMG stays in a crate because we definitely need all the diversity that we can get out of crates. That random factor of what you're going to get in a crate is part of that adrenaline rush. They're on a new website called skin-tracker.com, P-U-B-G, and this is the data mined uh, skins right here. I'm gonna leave a link in the description also for the skins tracker website for you guys that took the time to 3D render and data mine all of these different skins that you can actually look at and play around with. There were a few really cool ones that actually stood out like the jacket with the hoodie, a uh, black option, a white option. Now my guess is as good as yours. I'm thinking that these will be part of a set like they did with the Gamescon crates, uh, the little banana suits and the black outfits, the schoolgirl outfits. So I'm assuming it's probably gonna be like a special event that they're gonna hold where all these outfits are gonna be revealed. And uh, on a side note, they also uh, data mined some extra skins. I'm talking about backpack skins, parachute skins. The ones that really stood out to me were the sleeveless jackets with the medals. Now, I really like those. I don't know why, but this one without the hoodie is definitely up my alley more. And uh, I'm going to be looking forward to opening some crates, hopefully to get that outfit with the medals and everything. It's a really dope looking outfit. All right, I feel like I need to wrap this video up. I've already been yapping for way too long. I wanted to end the video by talking about some optimization stuff, some things that PlayerUnknown talked about in the AMA, confirmations on what is fact and what is fiction and what to expect in the future. Now, mind you, I'm going to try to paraphrase as much as possible. Uh, I'll actually have the exact quotes for you guys on the screen. If you really want to pause the video and read all that stuff, you could do that. But I want to try to make this as short and sweet as possible. Number one, there's been two maps confirmed for sure. We're going to get an Arctic map, which we haven't really seen yet. And of course, the new desert map, which is going to come out at the end of the year. Number two, let's talk about optimization. When asked about optimization, PlayerUnknown basically said all that information is going to be coming from the dev blogs. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So I guess in, in one way or another, he's just saying, hey, be patient. It's number one on the agenda. We're working on it. We want people to have these big sort of firefights in big cities and stuff, but that sort of stuff takes a lot of time and patience and optimization is coming. But um, I guess how these cities will render 
and what parts of the cities that we'll be able to loot and how many buildings we'll be able to go in is, is basically all part of optimization. So they're working on it and I think that that's on top of their list and that's great to know. Number three, this is probably the most asked question that I get when it comes to bullet penetration is that are they going to have bullet penetration in water? And the answer to that is obviously yes, they are working on it. Uh, not sure when it's going to be released, but even if they gave us like a small option for maybe one specific gun, like an SDAR, something that can work in water for us, that would be amazing. It would definitely change the dynamic of firefights uh, up and around watered areas. And as far as bullet penetration for houses, doors, door frames, window sills, iron bars, metal bars, I've talked ad nauseum about all that stuff. Hopefully they'll implement that in the future and we'll be able to take out campers without even going inside the house. Number four, more servers are definitely coming to an area near you. If you ask me, there definitely needs to be a whole lot more servers. Uh, we've had a lot of crossover here happening lately from the Asian servers. A lot of them are playing on North American servers. And I just feel like maybe add a few more servers to the center of the map. I'm talking about the Middle East, uh, North Africa, South Africa even. Number five, this is also one of the most asked questions that I get. Is there going to be a nighttime mode? And I think that PU basically spelled it out for us, saying that they've already tested that and it looks pretty good. So if they've tested it and it's already been, you know, implemented somewhere on a test server, that we're probably gonna see it in the future. So I think that's a big yes from PUBG. Although if night servers are a thing, I really hope that they implement some night vision as well, because that would be freaking amazing. Except maybe, you know, just put the night vision in crates. Number six, UI and UI settings. Now I already showed you guys some of the new UI options that are gonna be coming out in the 1.0 PC patch at the end of the year, along with vaulting. But I honestly, I would really like to see some more customizations as far as the UI is concerned and people being able to sort of free float where the health bar sits or uh, having a different option uh, for the mini map and not have it sit on the bottom right side, but maybe be able to move it around as well. So I'm really looking forward to that and being able to customize your very own personal settings and having sort of a different UI than anybody else would be amazing. Number seven, modding. I remember seeing an interview a very long time ago when the game first came out of uh, Player Unknown actually saying, hey, we're definitely gonna have modding in the game. It's been confirmed and he's looking for the next Player Unknown. Number eight, solo kill cams. Now I'm thinking that this is probably in the distant future, but it has been confirmed that we will be able to have a kill cam of who killed us, but that'll only be available in solo matches. Of course, it'd be cheating if it was in duos or squads. Number nine, which you've already seen, the vaulting. It's coming. Just have to wait till the end of the year, I guess, till it's all here. And last but not least, number 10, we're definitely confirmed on the weapon skins as well. We're going to be having some new weapon skins coming out uh, along with backpacks and parachutes and I guess anything and everything you can think of. Well, that's it. The whole enchilada and all the new game news that you could possibly digest about PUBG. And I really hope and pray that I don't have to make another one of these till probably next year because a lot of you are just asking me and hungry for information about the game, all the new stuff that's going to happen and the game news in general. So this will probably be the last video for this type of format till the end of the year. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, if you appreciate the dedication that I put into these videos and getting all the information for you guys, the Reddit posts, the videos, the interviews, please be sure to leave a like and share it with your friends. Let's see if we can get this video up to at least 500 likes. Thank you so much for watching guys. As always, stay strong and I'll see you.